Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Moss. And in this video, I want to walk you through the solution for this leak code problem, longest substring without repeating characters. This is a medium level difficulty problem, um, but it is asked by uh, a lot of companies, as you can see here, these are the companies, uh, some of the companies that ask this particular uh, question in interviews. And if you look at the category, the problem category sliding window, um, this problem uh, has the highest frequency of problems that appear in real interviews. So it's a pretty good problem to practice if you're getting ready for an interview. And uh, what I want to do is just kind of walk through uh, this solution here. So let's take a look at the problem description. Uh, Given a string S, find the length of the longest substring without repeating characters. And if we take a look at the definition of a substring, a substring is a contiguous non-empty sequence of characters within a string. And contiguous basically means that uh, you know it's a consecutive, uh, it's consecutive characters. So if we take the example here, um, the output is three. So it's asking to return the length of the longest substring. The longest substring here is three. The explanation says the answer is ABC, but there's actually uh, several um, substrings of length three in this array. So if we look at ABC, that's one. We can do, we could also do BCA or CAB or ABC. So those are multiple substrings that have a length of three, and any of those could produce the right answer. So let's manually walk through step-by-step step, uh, the solution to this problem. So I've copied that first example input uh, onto this whiteboard, and I've also copied the, uh, the code solution as well. In addition to the uh, input, the example uh, input array, we have this, um, this array called substring, and this maps to this variable substring and then a variable max length, which map, maps to this max length variable. So this problem can be solved using a sliding window approach, which is one of multiple patterns that you can use to solve uh, leak code style questions. And the basic idea here is that you have, um, you define some window of either a fixed size or a variable size, and you pass that window over the input array. So let's say the window is of size three. So the window includes the elements uh, A, B, and C. And uh, you would perform some operation on the elements that are included in that window. And once you've done so, you would then uh, move the window over the input array, maybe by one increment or maybe by three increments, you would define uh, how much you would uh, move the window on each iteration. So in this solution, our window is this substring array. And the constraints of our window is that no character in the substring window should be repeated. So we're going to be adjusting the window size to maintain this constraint. In addition to adjusting the window size, we'll also be moving the window over the input array as well. The basic idea here is that we're going to iterate over each character in the input array, and we're going to add it to the window as long as the character doesn't already exist in the substring window. If it does exist, then we're going to adjust the size of the substring window and move it uh, in the input array. So let's go ahead and walk through the code, starting with uh, the first character here, A. So. Uh, in this first for loop, we're iterating over all elements in the input array. So for i and s, we're going to check if i is in the substring array. In this case, it's not. The substring array is currently empty. So what we're going to do is we're going to append i to the substring. So we're going to append a to the substring array. After we append A to the substring array, we're going to check the length of the substring array and compare it with the value of max length. And if the length of the substring array is greater than max length, then we're going to set max length to be the length of the substring. And 
initially max length is set to zero. So on after this first iteration where we add A to the substring window, we're gonna update max length to be one. Now we're gonna evaluate B. And again, we check if B is in uh, the substring array, it is not. So we don't uh, execute these two lines here. We just append B to the substring window. After appending B to the substring window, we then compare the length of the window to the value of max length. And now the window has grown and its size is two. So we're gonna update the max length to uh, the value two. Now we're gonna to move to C. We'll check, is C in the substring window? It's currently not in the substring window. So we're gonna append a C to the substring window. And again, our window size has increased. So our window is of length three. It includes A, B, and C. We're gonna update max length to be three. Then we move to the next uh, character, which is A. And we're gonna check, is A in the substring window? And it is. So it's a repeated character and the constraints of our window is that there cannot be a repeated character in the window. So what this means is that we're gonna have to slide the window forward in the input array so that it no longer includes the repeated character, which is A. So we want the window to look like this, B, C, A. And we can do that pretty easily in Python by retrieving the index of A in the substring. So here we're checking if, uh, if A is in the substring, then we get the index of A in the substring, which should be zero. And once we have that, we're gonna update the substring by uh, doing some simple slicing. So here what we're saying is the substring is now equal to basically everything after A. So the substring will look, after this operation, the substring should look like this, B, C, okay? So this is zero plus one uh, to everything after the, the zero plus one index. And once we've sliced the array and adjusted the window size, we then append the current character, which is A. So let's update the, uh, the window here to be BCA. And we check if the length of the current substring window is greater than the max length. It's not, it's just the same value. And then we're gonna go to the next iteration, which is B. And we're gonna look at B and we're gonna say is B, uh, D does B exist in the substring window? And it does, it's the first element in the substring window. So this condition is gonna be true. We're going to then uh, get the index of B in the substring, which is zero, just like uh, last time. And we're gonna slice the array again. So we're gonna take everything after B, which is just gonna be C and A. And then after that, we're gonna append B. So now the substring window looks like this, C-A-B. And I'll move my window up here to include C-A-B. And then let's go to the next iteration. We're looking at C. And we check is C in the substring window? It is, so we're gonna get the index of C, which is zero. And again, we're gonna slice it so that uh, we only have A and B and then we'll append C. So we'll, we'll have ABC uh, after this. And when we do the comparison between the length of the substring window and max length, it's still three. So there's no change to the value of max length. So we have ABC. As the new window, we move to the next character, which is B. And then this is where there's a slight variation 
So in this particular case, there'll be a modification, a resizing of the uh, window. So we're actually gonna make the window a little bit smaller on this iteration. So if we look at B and check if B is in the substring window, it is, and it's not in the first index uh, like the previous repeated characters. It's actually in the middle of the window. So what's gonna happen when we slice this, the way our slicing works is that we're taking uh, the substring, everything after the repeated character. So we're actually gonna be deleting A and B uh, when, we, when we slice the substring on this iteration. So if B is in substring, which it is, we get the index of B in the substring, which is one. And then our substring equals substring one plus one, which is two and everything after. Well, two is the last index in this case. Okay, so the only thing that we're keeping in the window is C. And then after that, we append the character that we're currently evaluating, which is B. Okay, so our window will look like this. It actually shrank. Uh, and so the length of our uh, substring window is now 2. We compare it with the max length. Max length value doesn't change. So if I update the window here, we have we slide the window over, and it's of size 2 now. So I'm going to... Update the array here, the substring window array. And we go on to the next iteration. And so we go to the last uh, character in the input, which is B. And we check, is B in the substring window? It is, and it's the last character in the substring window. Um, so we're actually... Uh, not taking any of the characters in the substring window in this case, and our window is resized to be only one. So here we're checking, is B in substring? It is. The index of B is one when we get the, the index of B, and then we slice the, um, the substring one plus one, which is two. It's out of bounds. Right, so we're basically not keeping any any of the characters in the substring window. It's empty. And then here we append B. Okay. So at the end of uh, all iterations, we only have uh, B in the substring window. We do one final comparison between the length of the substring window, which is one by the time we get to the end. And the max length is three, so that ch that remains unchanged. And then finally, we return the max length of value. So if we run this code, uh, you should get a um, an accepted answer, and you can see that it's got fairly good runtime and memory. Um, I'm sure there's probably more optimized solutions, but if you uh, do identify anything that can be improved in this particular solution, uh, feel free to leave a comment uh, down below or uh, give me feedback on how this particular solution can be improved. I know that there's a couple of alternative approaches uh, that you could use, one that includes uh, dictionaries if you're writing in Python. I hope this explanation helped, and if it did, please consider throwing a like on the video and subscribing to the channel for more videos like this. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, please leave them below. And thanks for watching.